In this, we understand the difference between the faith that we hold and the practice, the physical practice that we've been in charge with. Practice can shift, can change, and it needs to shift and change, especially as we walk, as we approach times in which shift and change is essential, essential in our form of religion. People who hold on and hold on to a different order, they're going to find that holding on to that different order is like holding on to a sinner. When the people of the end of time manifest, Jesus is sort of Mary salam, who comes with tabirat of the deen of the Prophet so that will be prescribed by the Messenger that Jesus on a very, very descent, Yoksu the Sali, he will smash great old crosses, and he will kill every single pig on the face of the earth, and there are different types of pigs. But likewise, also, Saint Isa bin Maryam will also he will also abolish, abrogate any type of jizya, and the tax that those who live inside the polity of Islam who are not Muslim are afforded to pay by the law of the land. That's there to say Isa bin Maryam. That's Jesus, the son of Mary, alayhi salam. And his people, those who manifest at the end of time, are awaiting the manifestation of Jesus on the Mary alayhi salam in the tradition that was raised by Abu Na'im and raised by Ibn al-Bayhaqi rahimahullah ta'ala that Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala al-Ba'atha Sa'ada that he sent Sayyidina Sa'ad ibn al-Hayb ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala an of the ten lords of the companions, ten guaranteed paradise he sends him to Hilwan al-Iraq he sends him to Iraq to open up Iraq and it's our great man that we should thank for the open up of the Iraq, the open up of the and Nahar. All those lands that lie beyond the great river of the Iraq, that's the great Imam from the Sahaba, Sayyidina Sa'ad ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa arda, is one who opened up their great lands. Sayyidina Sa'ad radiallahu ta'ala anhu, in order to open up this specific part of the Iraq, on the instruction of Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab, this after the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he sends a companion, his name is Nabla ibn Muawiyah, and an Ansari radiallahu ta'ala an, in order to actually take this actual height, Hilwan, from the Iraq. And Nabla takes the actual height, conquered 400 fairest, 400 knights, they conquer this specific part of the Iraq, and thereafter they take all of the booty, spoils of war, to the height of the mountain which is inside of the Iraq at Hilwan. He says when he reaches the top of the mountain, time for salah. So Sayyidina Nabla himself, who is the actual commander of that sortie of that group, on behalf of Sayyidina Sa'ad, radiallahu ta'ala, and he begins to call the adhan. Ashab Dika begins to call the adhan. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And as he calls the adhan, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, he hears a voice emanate from without, from God. You can't see the person who's speaking. Yet he kabbar takbira. That you've made a great declaration of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's greatness. When he says, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And then when he says, Ashadu Allah, ilaha illallah. When he says, I bear witness, there is no deity but Allah. He hears a voice, the same voice, speak back to him. He said, Wabi dhalika shahida ahlu samawati wal ahl. He said, and that has been witnessed by the inhabitants of the heavens, the celestial as well as the terrestrial, the heavens and earth. And then he says, Ashadu anna Muhammad, Rasulullah in Yadhan. Then he hears the voice likewise say, Nabiya, Bu'ith, a prophet who has been sent, La Nabiya Ba'd. And there's no prophet after him. And then when he says, Hayya ala salah, Hayya ala salah, then likewise he says, Tuba, he hears a voice say, Tuba, glad tidings of paradise, Liman, Liman, Masha ilayha, Allah wada alayha. The one who goes onto it and maintains it. And there is a Hayya ala al falah. Hayya ala al falah. Yani, yani, come on to success. He said, Unto Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahi wa sallam. Al baqa li ummatihi. That which is eternal for his ummah. And here when he finishes the adhan, Sayyidina Nabla radiallahu ta'ala and begins to address, Men anta, who are you? And then the voice, then a person appears. And he's in two folds, fold on khalaq, like what somebody would wear for hajj. He has two folds, khalaq, that they're rough and they're made out of wool. And then he says, Ana wafullah, I'm the delegation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa ana waf nabihihi, and I am the delegation of his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wa sallam wa waf Umar ibn al-Khattab. And I am the waf, the delegation of Umar ibn al-Khattab. He said, Wa ana, he said, I am wasi. Isa ibn Amadi. I am the one, the, the, the wasi, which is the legacy of Jesus, the son of Mary alayhi salam, and his name is Zuraib ibn al-Barthamla. 
Zureyf ibn al-Bartalla, and he said, Asalli Isa ibn Mali alayhi salam, that Jesus, the son of Mary alayhi salam, he was the one, Jesus, who sent me to the mountains of Hilwan, the time of Sayyid Isa ibn Mali, sent me, he's a disciple of Jesus, sent me to the mountains, and this is something that we should understand from our deen, if you just study the great surah that we should have recited today, Surah al kahf And we look at the story of the boys of, of Surah al kahf the Fatayan, those young ones, Surah al kahf Who were they and why did they become Muslim? That they become Muslim due to the da'wah of Sayyidina Isa ibn Maryam, that Jesus alayhi salam and his great mother, the Siddiqah of Maryam alayhi salam, they had sent messengers to various parts of the world to await the manifestation of the final Prophet And manuscripts that we see to this day manifest, send messengers to what? To Espania, to Andalus, send messengers to North Africa, messengers to Egypt, and many messengers, the majority of them, into what? Into the Arabian Peninsula of itself, as well as the Anatolia to Old Turkey, where is the, the reality of Ashab al -Kah. When we read the seerah of the Prophet we see many of these people, all their students, manifest, just before the coming of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they know that the Hunafa. So from our tradition, some of the ulama even say that they even disciples of Jesus, as an example whom Salman al Farisi, radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa in a position that he is an actual disciple of Jesus, Ibn Hajar al Asqalani, rahimahullah ta'ala, mentioned it inside of his Isaba. This is a disciple of Jesus, Zurayn, a disciple of Jesus inside the mountains of Iraq. And he said that Jesus was the one who sent me to these mountains to await his manifestation. His manifestation meaning Jesus' own manifestation at the end of the time. The fact that I have missed the Prophet himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I confirmed that he doesn't meet the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Umar ibn al-Khattab as-salam. Give my salam to Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab. He says, and then he said, tell Umar ibn al-Khattab, Sadidu wa qaribu, to bring the ranks together. The believers together, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks inside the Surah al saf And these are essential things that are essential for people at the end of time that the Sufuf, what they call Tafheed al Sufuf, that the ranks of the believers are brought together. And all of these types of schisms that have crept inside the Ummah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that serve to separate, not to bring together like the verses we just heard. Wala tafarraku, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Commandment of Allah Jannah al Ula. For us not to separate, Siddhidu wa qaribu. He said to Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab, the Nabla, to tell Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab, brings the ranks together. And he says, because at al Harab, al Harab, it was going to be time for everybody to flee with his religion when signs manifest inside of the Ummah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From the signs he made mention, when he said, he speaks about the issues of homosexuality. When man, man finds solace in men, fakat, or women find solace in women, fakat. Yani men after men and women after women. Men taking on the attributes of women in order to bring about that type of foul union as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam cares, al min al wa min al That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa cares, men who behave like women and women who behave like men. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, the one who said, ma bu'ithu la'anan, I will not sent as one who cares. So when he cares, sallallahu alayhi wa it's a dire reality that a human being has now characterized himself with. And what's even more foul, as the hadith says, is that when Nabla and Yali Zurayn says, when people see ma'aruf and they don't enjoy it, and we know the law and we don't teach the law and preach the law, we don't enjoy people to embody the law, when people see munkar, when they see that which contravenes the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they don't know those who are going to war, who are going to speak out against. I don't want to develop the yeah, idea. Yeah. silence in the face of this tyranny that manifests upon the face of the earth. Tyranny at every single level, contraventions of the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Perhaps you see a human being from amongst the ummah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa speaking defense of laws of kufr, speaking defense of international laws of kufr or national laws of kufr or regional laws of kufr, but you'll find them silent in terms of upholding the law of Allah. If you're going to meet on the other side of the veil, come on, then that's one thing. If you're going to meet on the other side of the veil, the head of the United Nations or the head of America, that's one thing. But if you meet Allah, then fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as it relates to his religion. Fear him subhanahu wa 
Ta'ala. Many things he mentioned that you find that the elders will pay no what, no compassion to the youngsters, and the youngsters will show no what, respect to the elders. You find people taking on and sad, taking on names that are not their own, relating themselves to families, living to blessed or living to other than blessed that are not their own. He begins to mention various things. He mentions Yari with the Rukhi method, Suruj and Suruj and Suruj. He mentions women's liberation, women's live. When women now begin to try to occupy the sphere of the reality of men, this was already mentioned inside the hadith. Things that are from the signs of the end of time. He said at that point in time, it's time to flee. Flee with your religion. He said, Radiallahu ta'ala an. What we see in our day and age, he says, send this to Amr ibn al-Khattab. Fadab an. Zuraid then disappears. And then saying another informs Sa'ad. Sa'ad informs Amr ibn al-Khattab. Amr ibn al-Khattab says, Who will there be? Akhbarna anhu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's the one the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us about. And the Prophet said, Amr ibn al-Khattab says, Sir, ma'an wahajri wal ansar. He says, Ya ni scour the entire Iraq, the mountain of Iraq, for that individual. Go and find him. Say the Sa'ad ibn Malik takes 4,000 soldiers into the mountains of Iraq and all they do is call the Adhan. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. But that's what brought the manifestation of the great being. Calling the Adhan for 40 days, they never find Sayyidina Zuraid, radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa arda. The reality is not about finding Sayyidina Zuraid, because the one who finds Isa ibn Maryam will find Sayyidina Zuraid at the end of time, Hatma, no doubt about that. But the issue is about the signs that he spoke about as we endeavor to ensure that if that time comes, we're people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can't be people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the physical is not regulated. No matter what anybody says, there may be people who claim we may call to some type of higher order religion, but as a means of what? Of negating the very essence, part of the essence of religion, which is regulation of the physical. And what we would do hold on to in an age which no doubt whatsoever is a radical age, and no matter what your criterion is, for time to adjudicate the age in which we live in, the ages are gone. This is an age of deep radicalism at every single level. And we should understand that never does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow radicalism, the world of duality, to manifest at one level inside of the world of manifestation, the world of cover, except that also we're going to see radicalism manifest inside of the world of belief. And that's the words of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, on that day, fustatan. On that day, two camps, the Prophet said, end of time scenario. He said, Iman, then he He said, faith that is not tainted by hypocrisy will kufr, let Iman feed. And disbelief that is not, quote unquote, tainted by faith, the Prophet said, what is required of each and every single one of us is to be of those who are people of preparation, that we prepare for the age in which we live in. That we become Ahlul Islam, Hakikat and people of Islam in the truest sense. We don't just wait for the signs, as many of the manifest of the same as Zuraid, when you the things he made mention of, that when, that when the, 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 the minarets of mosques are built high, the high minarets in mosques, sign at the end of time. He says, when the, the Mus'haf is adorned, Fadbadul Masakhir, he said, when the Mus'haf is adorned, sign at the end of time. He said, Radiallahu ta'ala, yani, Zakhara fil Masajid. When the Masjid, people spend 60 million pounds on building the mosque. How much the Masjid of the Masjid of Allah is so the greatest Masjid ever built? How, how much did that cost? Yeah, and where's the Dustur? Yeah, and where's the criteria? Where's the Fatah? Where is it? Ah, this is things that he made mention of. Shaykh Yudul Madani. He said that we start building lofty buildings, as likewise in Hadith in Sahih Muslim. يَمْتَدُ الْأَمَةُ الرَّبَّةُ وَتَرَاكُ فَهَذَا الْرَوَاضِ الْعَيْنَةَ لِعَيْشَةَ يَقَطَوَ لُونَ فِي الْبُنْيَةِ When you see David, naked, destitute, barefoot, herdsmen competing in the construction of skyscrapers, the Prophet said, signs of the end of time, and who fought him? The one who's intelligent in the Lillahi Ibad al-Fudhullah in the Shafi'i said, the very Allah has intelligent servants, the one who's intelligent, and he's intelligent, he reads signs. And he acts in accordance with those signs. And the one who is beyond intelligence, he prepares for the signs. Why? Because they manifest from لا يخرج من هذا إلى الحق. They manifest from a mouth that only manifests and speaks the truth. صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم.